It says to uh, worship the Lord on the Sheva, on the Shabbat. Okay? Shabbat is the diminutive of Sheva. Uh, and so it's on the seventh day of the week. But uh, a few centuries later, it got changed to the Sabbath. And when's the Sabbath? Well, it's Sunday. Well, why is it Sunday? Well, because that's when we celebrate the Sabbath. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, we've been celebrating it now for a few hundred years on Sunday. So um, that's, we're celebrating it. Uh, we're, we're honoring the Sabbath. And the Sabbath had been transformed to Sunday. Just the opposite of what God says. Some uh, Slewfoot comes in there and changes it to the opposite. Instead of the first day of the week, to the last day of the week. Uh, to, from the last day of the week to the first day of the week. Isn't it interesting how the Ten Commandments got changed? And we're not even aware of it. But uh, So if you'll, if you'll look through some Catholic uh, uh, Ten Commandments and compare it with the Hebrew, uh, you'll find that there is a discrepancy. Okay. And that's how we wind up with Saturday and Sunday worship. Now, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, in heavenly places, we're going to be doing this seven days a week. Okay, so uh, I, I think I think it's what's in people's hearts that is the important thing. Um, so uh, let's see, we have uh, a number of people. We have some, we have some people who are away on travel, and uh, you know it's amazing how dependent we become on some people who are really standouts in service. You know, it takes about thirty-five people. Uh, who perform one function or another uh, for our congregation to function. And uh, their, the roles are not all, always visible. We have a few families, like the Navarro family, that are here. Uh, Robert is uh, one of our Shamashim, one of our deacons. He's here at 7.30. But his wife and daughter show up at uh, 8 o'clock. But then there's the Studer family, and they're, they're here, and they're all functioning. Uh, and... Uh, uh, in different roles, and, 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 and then uh, David Iniguez and his family, they are not here today. In any case, we have other people who fill the void. And, uh, and you know, it's, a, it's, it's really a nice thing. And so we could use a little extra help today. Uh, but, you know, actually, if you think about it, ministry is a gratifying thing. There's so much out there that promises us gratification and satisfaction, and it doesn't work out. It, it, it's an illusion, a delusion that we're going to be gratified in the things of the world. But you know, when we give service to the Lord, uh, we get welded together in friendship with other people, and and it, you know, it's it's not a it, it's not a, a burdensome yoke. It winds up to be, you know, something that we look forward to and we're we're in and. Uh, and that's how we get to feel like members of a family. In California, there's a lot of alienation. And it's hard. You know, a lot of us don't live near our families. But in a congregation, if you, know, if you, get, if you get into friendships, you can, you can get to feel like you have a family. So that's my commercial. They get a little extra help with the Onyx Shabbat and the cleanup. Uh, David normally mops the floors, but you don't got to do that this week. But a little extra help would, would be helpful. Okay, with all that said, I want to call on the children to come forward. And I want to ask Jerry Cohen. Yeah, come on up here, Jerry. And Stanley, you come up too. And we're going we're gonna to pray over the children. Is that you? No. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Carol, you're getting too tall. I'm getting too tall. Okay, we have a we have we have a nursery program, we have a children's program and a young adults program. So bring them, Heavenly Father. We thank you for these children that uh, they've come to be exposed to your word early in life. Uh, train them up in the way they should go, and they, they will they will return to it after many days. We just ask Lord that you would bless them, bless the class, bless Carol for her service especially in the class, and Terry, uh, for his service. And we just thank you, Lord, that you do these things because you care 
and you will care especially because you have already made designs on the lives of these children. We'll thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, off to class. Off to class. <laughs> so um, it's uh, you know we are a uh, we believe in the New Testament and we believe in the Old Testament and uh, it sometimes seems like fun to see how. The, all the concepts of the new covenant are from the old covenant. There are no new concepts. Oh, what is that right? I thought I thought there were no. They all were from the old covenant with an expansion of explanation, uh, so that so that more understanding could be made, uh, an extrapolation, if you will, about old co Old Testament precepts. So I'm always, to me, it's it's always it's always nice. To go back and say, well, where does this where does this concept come from? So uh, we want to do a little of that this morning, uh, but let's put things in order, okay? Uh, we came here to hear from we came to hear from the Holy Spirit. Uh, that is uh, that's what makes it interesting that there is that there is a force out there, an invisible force that influences things and can speak to us in ways that are understandable to us. That may be unique, to e that is unique to each individual, how he speaks in, 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 and tells us which way to go, what to do. Not immediately, not this second, but over time he will guide our paths. He promises to do that. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he will guide your, your path. He promises. So, uh, please join me. <coughs> Spirit of holiness, it is you that represents Yeshua, and by his crucifixion, the spirit of this man was let loose, available to all people in all times and all situations throughout the ages. You are the holiness of Yeshua that resides in our hearts. We have invited you to come into our hearts, and we we, and, and we know that that's necessary to invite you in. You're not coming in without an invitation, and we gave you an invitation to come in because you said that, behold, all things will become new. You didn't say overnight, but behold, they all have become new. And you bless us, and we ask that you would speak to us this morning, breathe upon your word, make it become alive, give us new thoughts that we haven't considered before in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right, an Old Testament scripture I want to start out with is Psalm 58, 11. All right, because I just said something about, uh, you know, um, reward, that, that there's service, but, you know, there's also reward. We human beings, we're very reward-oriented. We're not so much interested in supplying the elbow grease, but we are interested in the reward. Psalm 58, 11 says something about that it says so that a man shall say verily there is a reward for the righteous verily he is a god that judges in the earth so king david said there is a reward for the righteousnesses that we manifest well okay god's just but his justice is exceedingly fine down to the nth detail and he's well capable of doing that, after all. He establishes his stars in the heaven. He's, I mean, just imagine how many million, jillion light years there is for uh, the light to come. But, uh, I mean, just imagine, just imagine that we watch these constellations, certain stars move in, in concert across the sky in predictable ways. And, and, and one star may be a million jillion miles, a, light year, a million jillion light years away, and another one may be 10,000 million jillion light years away, but they are all traveling in our view together. I mean, and, and what's more, and that goes back so, so many, so uh, un, an unfathomable period of time, and then, and then it's all done so, so exactly, 
I mean, if it was off just a little bit, just imagine over a million jillion light years how that could be, that little discrepancy could be uh, 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 multiplied and distorted. But no, this situation moves across the sky perfectly. And, and this, with the same distance between, to our visibility. And then, and then imagine, we, I mean, we have an eyeball that can actually see it. And we have a brain that has all these billions of cells and blood throwing, flowing through them and nerve endings. And that, that somehow mysteriously winds up to be a thought. That gets, it, it, so it, it, we peer at it through our eyes and, and through the microcosmic brain, the, the things that make up the brain, we can perceive it. And then, and then, ugh, wonder of wonders, what a mystery. It, it has meaning for us that the constellations have meaning. I mean, this God knows what he's doing in, 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 in fine detail, in fine detail. And we should wonder whether or not he is capable of keeping track of our needs. If he can do all that and he can keep our brains functioning to perceive those stars that have been out there moving in perfect mathematical precision for million jillion light years away in, in galaxies that are beyond our telescopes and comprehension. I mean, he know, he's a person. He's the most important person, but he knows what he's doing and he keeps track of all of it, doesn't forget any of it. He is capable, he is well able to take care of every single detail. Every single detail. Better than we can. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing that he is able to perform on. And he says, not to worry, I'm keeping track. I judge the whole earth and there is a reward for righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Let us look into the new covenant and see how this actually works its way out. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. And there's something interesting here for us to consider, I think. It says, are they ministers of Messiah? I speak as a fool because uh, it sounds like I'm bragging. Uh, but you know, um, my you know, I'm, I'm Paul is saying, Apostle Paul is saying, you know, I'm in labors. I, I do abundant labors. He says so. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm a minister of the Messiah because I'm abundant in my labors and in stripes. I've taken some whippings here. And he says, in, uh, above measure, he says, I've been in prisons and frequently, uh, frequently my life has been in jeopardy. Verse twenty four says. Of the Jewish people, five times received I 40, 40 stripes, save one. Five times he received 39 stripes. Now let's see. Uh, let's ask ourselves, could I take 39 stripes even once? No, I don't think so. Uh, how, about ten, how about 10 stripes? I don't think so. But he took 39 stripes five times. Well, this guy is really, you know, he's, he, he's certainly dedicated Okay, but not to worry because that's not the end of what the Apostle Paul did. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Uh, I guess that's different than 39 stripes. Uh, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Three times he suffered shipwreck and survived. Uh, a, a day and a night he's been in, in the water. So, so he's, been in, he's been in shipwrecks three times, and, and, and he's a day and a half in the water. You know, you can get eaten in the water. Uh, in journeys, often in perils of water, in perils of, of, of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among the false brethren, <laughs> in weariness and painfulness, in watchfulness, often in hunger, and hunger, just, and thirst, in fastings, often in cold, and nakedness. I mean, this guy is out there. On the e he's living on the edge, and he did so for a sustained period of time. So the apostle Paul showed himself to be a stand. Now, why did he do that? Why did he do that? I mean, it's such an ex extreme. It's the extremities of it, that uh, of what he took. Why did he do that? Why so much focusing in? Well, it says you know to whom much is given, much is expected. And he was given much. He, he got to be a leader. But, you know, he got to be a leader because people admired his service. The service and the leadership 
tend to go together. Now, the Apostle Paul was a learned man, and he knew the Scripture, and that's uh, from the Old Testament. He knew many Scriptures from the Old Testament, saying that God is just to reward for what we put forward on his behalf. So, Paul, knowing that, could it be that in part the motivation for Paul to take all of this, and it was substantial, the motivation was that there was going to be a reward, that there is nothing that I experience that's lousy that there isn't going to be benefit for. Yeah, I'm going to be whipped. Yeah, okay, yeah, oh, that one, oh, that one hurt. Yeah, oh, Whip, whips today instead of rods? Yeah, whip, no, yeah, well, rods today instead of whips. Yeah. Uh, uh, that hurt, oh my goodness, I don't know if I can take it anymore. I'm about to pass out and so on and so on. But there is a reward for every stripe. Could it be that this was a great portion of his motivation to go through all this? He's out there in the sea. It's, it's, it, it's only the second time that he's been shipwrecked. So he's not, he's not quite used to it yet, but he's a day and a half, and it's dark, and it's so on, and it's cold. And yet he's there, but he's reminding himself of the Scriptures to escape his present reality. He quotes the Scriptures to himself and loses himself. He goes to his default ethereal position, whereby he focuses on God to escape this present reality, counting on the promises of God. And the worst that happens is, is he takes me now, and I die now, and maybe we're through with the stripes and the rods. So maybe the Apostle Paul said, well, you know, if I perish, I perish. Hey, might not be bad. I wouldn't mind stepping out of this situation. But Paul, no such luck, Paul. You're going to have to hang in there for the duration. We got, we got more for you. But there's reward, Paul. Yeah, I got it. I got it. More, more suffering, more reward. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm with it. I'm staying with it. Boy, I hate this life. I'd like to get out of it. Anybody here identify? Huh? Have they gotten to the point where they actually sometimes hate this life? Does it seem long and hard sometimes? And you just assume, and quietly, you don't want to repeat it so anybody could hear it, but sometimes you say, Oh, Lord, can't we move on to the next step? Can I get out of this? Is my, can my time be sooner rather than later? Now, I know that's not in the hearts of all of you, but some of you, some of us, sometimes it feels that way. Okay, so that's, that's where Paul is. Paul's living it out. He's living it out. Let's turn to 2 Timothy and... Uh, chapter 4, we're going to learn a little bit more about the Apostle Paul and this equation that he's working with. 2 Timothy, chapter 4, and verse 5 says, But watch thou in all things, endure all things, do the work of an evangelist, be proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul's not a terribly old man, but he is ready to go. And he senses that his ministry is coming to a close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have hung in there. I, I, so far, I haven't given in. I, I show up. I do my job. There's penalties. I suffer the penalties. I have, stay, I have stayed with it. I have, I have not flinched. From what I have been assigned to do, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me at that day. The righteous judge, the, right, the judge who, does right, who will do right by me. And, not to me. and not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. So, Wow. Paul's going to get a crown of righteousness. Huh? And we can understand, boy, does he deserve a crown of righteousness, eh? Huh? What? Hey, that's at the beginning of the sentence. We're told about this crown of righteousness, and we say, wow, you deserve Paul. You really went through some real stuff. But by the end of the sentence, it says, and not for me only, but unto all them, that's all of us, all of them that love 
his appearing. That's us. We're looking forward to the appearing of the Messiah. So it says all, it doesn't say some, it says all who are looking forward to the coming of the Messiah and his appearance in the sky. And you're going to see him. Oh, whether you're still in this flesh or not, I, I, I can't tell you. But you are going to see him. You're, gonna look, you're looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. Okay? Now, and that's all of us. I didn't take 39 stripes. Well, maybe Paul will have a better standing in heaven than you. Well, that's okay. He deserves a better standing than me in heaven. Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, in heaven we have a kind of a hierarchical situation. Yeah, we have Yeshua, and uh, but there's cherubim and seraphim and this angel and uh, Michael, an archangel. I mean, so it, it suggests that there that there's a hierarchical situation, and there's a hierarchical situation in the satanic kingdom too. Okay, so, uh, but that's okay, because I'm confident that when we get into heavenly places, each and every one of us, each and every one of us will feel like we've gotten better than we deserve. That's part of being in heaven, okay? And we'll, we'll, that's to be enjoyed that we've gotten, that, that the Lord sees and appreciates everything, and he's given us more than what we feel we, we deserve. And we will be, and it will be correct. We are going to get more than what we deserve. And God, do you notice that Paul, it doesn't talk about him having a cold or the flu, Huh? It doesn't, doesn't talk about him having a backache, a muscle spasm, right? A gallbladder attack. <laughs> you know, he had all of these things. He was a human being, right? Did he get, did he get angry? Um, you know, I, I don't. You know. He did not live a perfect life. He was a human being. There was only one guy that lived a perfect life. So the Apostle Paul, he's in the soup with the rest of us. He's leading an imperfect life. All right. But isn't it amazing? how his imperfections got edited out. Edited out. We don't know of his imperfections. We don't know this, the things that he did that were small-minded or maybe he slighted somebody. or maybe, We don't know. Why? The Lord, it, it, his life has been edited. Only the good stuff survives. Ah. The Lord, he, he's not a respecter of persons. The same rules apply to him as apply to us. So all the bad stuff that we've done, all the little pictures in our mind of the things we cringe at, oh, did I do that? Oh, did I say that? Why did I have to do that? Oh, that was bad. I wish I hadn't done it. Yeah, that's all going to be edited out for all eternity. That's done with. That's gone. That's rubbish. That's the refuse. That's the waste. And God is, I guess you'd call it waste management because that's all the wastefulness of our lives, and it, it's all washed away. Only, only what survives is what did I do, what did I do in the kingdom of God? That's all that's going to survive. And pity the poor person who don't got nothing, nothing but bad stuff, and nothing whereby they serve the kingdom of God, the Messiah, the scriptures, etc. Oh my goodness, it says that for, the, that for those who are the believers, Deuteronomy, Old Testament, 1500 BCE, it says, uh, no, uh, 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 the book of Daniel, excuse me, 550 BCE, says that there, that, that there will be some who are going to everlasting life and be rejoicing. And then there's others who will be going to everlasting contempt. There will be self-contempt. Why, why didn't I do something about that while I had a chance? So, well, so a just God, there's reward. Let's turn... You know, it says here about a crown of righteousness. Paul's got a crown of righteousness, huh? James 1.12. James 1.12 tells us a little more about this crown of righteousness. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, when he has trials, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them, that love him. 
So if you're one of those that has a love relationship with God, or with the, with the Messiah in particular, the, the human expression of God, you get, you shall, you shall receive a crown of life. So there's a crown available, not only to Paul, Paul says, not himself only, but other people. And here's James saying the same thing, okay? That after we're tried, and this life is a trial from beginning to end, that we are to receive a crown of life. Now, that's not everybody. You've got to be a friend of God, okay? Friend of God means that you're in the faith. Faith in what? Faith that the penalty for sin has been paid by Yeshua. Other than that, it doesn't, it doesn't work. All right, so there's a crown, and Paul speaks of it, and James speaks of it. 1 Peter 5, 4 tells us more about this crown. 1 Peter 5, 4. And a chief shepherd, that when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now there's a promise. So it's not just Yeshua that's got a crown, and not just Paul that's got a crown, but it's speaking about, and Paul says, it's not, not, not for me only. And, and, and James agrees that it's for all those who love the Lord, okay? All those who have invited him into their heart and life and are, and, and are, and are paying attention and have a, a, a relationship with God. It says that you're going to have a crown of glory that, that, that cannot fade away, will not, be fa will not be taken away. Wow, what a thing. Each of us is going to have a crown. Hey, I'm ready. Like the idea of having a crown. Um, Revelation 3.11. You know what's nice about having a crown? It... Uh, One of the really neat things about having a crown, uh, it, it's indicative of royalty. Oh, yes, we're a royal priesthood, the scriptures say. Well, royalty has authority. So here we are, waddling through this life, stumbling through the best way we can, and it's hard slogging. Any, now, some people, it doesn't appear as though they're having a hard slog. But they are. It's just hidden. Everybody, Job says, sure as the sparks fly upward is, 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 sure as the sparks fly upward is to have problems. Everybody has problems. Everybody has difficulty. Everybody is, is having a trial in this life. Some people have a physical trial. Some people have an emotional trial. Some people have spiritual trial. Some people have situational trial. Everybody's got everybody's got something that they're dealing with. And it's hard. And, and there's no escape. It just appears that some people have escaped that. But no, it, 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 by definition, if you're in this life, you have problems. Revelation 3.11 tells us more about this crown. It says, Behold, I come quickly, that no, that, uh, ho so hold fast that which that no man can take your crown. In other words, like Paul, hang in there, buddy. Hang in, stick it out, and if, if you can just show up, if you can just stay with it, you're, nobody can take away your crown. You got a crown. You're royalty. Now, royalty has authority. Okay? If you're part of the royal family, you got authority. Oh, so I'm going to have a crown, and I'm going to have authority? Yes, you are. So in this life, we feel like we are powerless. There is so much that we have no say so over. We anguish and we want this to happen and we want that to happen. And can you do it for me yesterday? Buy me, get me, bring me. I need something. I need this now. I, I'm suffering. Can't you see, oh God, that I'm suffering? I have been travailing for a long time. I've been travailing. I, I've been years. I, 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 how about it, God? Can you come across for me now? That's part of life, and we're all in the soup. We're all in this soup, and there's no... But we have to live it out. We have to live it out. But we can escape. We can escape and take refuge in the eternal. We can, 
we can, we can go to the, to the default position. And that is, instead of this reality, where the world is pressing in on us, saying you can't make it, saying you don't have enough, saying you don't have the capacity, all the things that are saying how hard it is, and, and instead of focusing on that, what we do is, is we focus we focus on the eternal. We focus on the promises. We focus on all the things that, that keep our minds not in the negative, but rather in the positive. And we take refuge in the eternal promises, the scriptures, the nature of God, and all of the things that put us in the kingdom of God. When we're in that default ethereal position where we're focused on the Bible, the Messiah, etc., etc., when there's a song in our heart where we're praising God, we have escaped this harsh reality. Hey, Mao said that, it's, that, it, that it is the, the opiate of the masses. Well, give me another shot, buddy. I need it. Okay, hallelujah. I need my regular dose. I come here on Saturdays to get my regular dose. Okay. <laughs> I guess that makes me a pusher. I love being a pusher in this regard. Okay. <laughs> So it seems as though we don't have any authority in this life. I mean, even if you're elected, you know, even if you're elected president of the United States, you, you, can, you can have a hard time. And, and, and it can seem as though you have a lot of authority, but when you try to do something, it seems maybe you don't. See? But in the next phase, in the next life, we will have authority. Well, Paul, can I petition the Lord in the next life? Yes, you can, and yes, you will. We can petition the Lord just like we can petition the Lord in this life. Nothing changes. It's just, it's just this cloak of flesh is gone, but we're still, you know, uh, Linda, you're still Linda in the next life, even, th even, though the f even though your frame is gone. huh? That's how it is, all right? So we can petition the Lord in this life. We can petition the Lord in the next life. Huh? And we can influence things. I can influence. I'm picking on Linda today. <laughs> I haven't picked on her in a long time. Okay. Uh, I can influence Linda. And nothing's going to change. I can, I can have an influence. Only thing is, I'm going to have a lot more influence. A lot more influence. Because I am going to be wearing a crown. I, I, I will have authority in heavenly places. In this life, I may be seemingly without, without benefit of the ability uh, of powerfulness to get things done. In the next life, we can affect things and we can get things done. And we will be in concert with the Lord and we will be, and we will be petitioning for things to be done that are in his will and therefore they will happen. Now we have a, we have a shadow of that, a mild version in this life because it's compromised by our flesh and our weakness and our doubt, etc., etc. But it goes on, and that's our future. Now, we are so taken up. We are, there's a delusion going on. The delusion is that life is the, is the big thing. And yes, I know. I, yeah, I don't know what happened before I was born. Of course, from the foundations of the earth, you existed. Because he had a design for you from the foundations of the earth. So you, you did pre-exist before your birth. And, and the intent and, and design of your life was known before you ever came out of your mother's womb. Okay, so you pre-existed, and now you're going to exist for eternal places forever and ever and ever. So whatever station you're in, in the forever situation, and then there's this in-between, this little brief period here. Some people it's 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 70 years old. Some people it's 90 years old, but it's a very brief interlude. That that's the pressing reality, that that's all that counts, that that's the big deal. That's nothing, that's a little, that's a little sliver of time. That's a little sliver of time, and we have a delusion that it, it, it's very important that I be gratified. I, 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 I need to get things, and I need to become an important person, and I need to be well-liked, and, and I certainly want my food and, 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 and a little drinky once in a while. I, I'd like that too, and, and I'd like to have some money. And, I, and, and we're so consumed with, with uh, how am I doing in this life that we forget that it's a small sliver of time and the reality is, is the before and the after. Why, why, have this, why have this interim? What's the purpose of the interim period? Why, why would God design this seemingly delusional period, this, in, this very small sliver of time, 
in between the pre-reality, the, 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 the pre-birth uh, and the, and the post-death? Why the interlude? What's that all about? God, do you know what you're doing? Oh, he does. Oh, he does. You see, this interim period is crucial in this respect. It's where we have an opportunity to, to decide. It's where it's decided where we're going to stand. What is, where are we going to be in heavenly places? What is going to be, what kind of crown are we going to have? Huh? Where am I going to stand? It's going to be a hierarchy, but where am I going to be in the hierarchy? Huh? What is, what is going to be the judgment over my life? You see, this is a trial. They call it a trial for a reason. Because what we do here represents an opportunity in this life. And because of the opportunity, depending upon what we do in this life, we'll tell the story as to where we are in the next life. And the next life goes on forever and ever. So the smart money, the, 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 the smart thing to do, if we can ever remember to do it is, is to say, whoa, I, it's going to be such a long period of time, I want just as good a place as I can be forever and ever. That's what I want. Is I, 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 I want to I not just be there. I, 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 it's in my enlightened self-interest <laughs> to not only be a good guy, but serve the Lord, give it everything I got. Huh? Because I am going to benefit, like Paul is going to benefit. Paul gets a crown, I get a crown. His crown will be bigger and better than mine, and, and, and probably bigger and better than yours. But he, he got a bigger and better crown, he earned it. What about all those stripes and rods, huh? What about all those things that he, that he experienced? But whatever it is, all right, if we... If we depending upon how good a job we do at serving the Lord, you know, that's, that's determinant of something about where we're going to be for a very, 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 very long time, forever. So that's the purpose of the interim, of this brief interim of three score, and it's our opportunity. You do it here, you do it here, and that's what will count forever. You don't do it here, and that won't count forever. Well, you didn't do much. I edited it out. But whatever it is, you're getting a crown anyhow. And you're going to say, oh, thank you, Lord. I didn't do much. But I sure I'm here, and I got to be a crown. And it's better than I deserve. And we're all going to feel like we got better than we deserved. So we're all getting a crown. And the meaning of the interim period is to establish our rank in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Okay, so there's some people, they're, 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 they're doing it very purposefully. I mean, they're out there mopping the floors, they're out there serving lunch, they're doing this, they're cooking the food, they're bringing the food, they're, they're here early, they're setting up the chairs, etc. everything. Why are they doing it? For the same reason the Apostle Paul did it. Yeah, they're getting stripes, on, they're, getting, they're, they're getting epaulets and stripes and, and so on, medals, yeah, medals, yeah, and they're, there's a reward coming, and they know it. And they are, they are wisely investing in their future. Wisely investing in their future. Oh, I can't be bothered because I don't know that I quite believe that. Well, okay. You pay your money. You take your chances. You fail to be an investor. Okay, you don't have to invest. But don't expect the big dividends in the hereafter. So we invest ourselves wisely. Now we say, what about this crown business? What else do I know about a crown? Yeah, gee, Paul, that's really good news, but I'm going to have a crown. Hmm, now I'm remembering Yeshua. Now surely there's a guy who deserves a crown. You know, he got a crown in this life. He had a thorny crown in his life, right? He had a thorny crown. It was the outlines it was the earthly outlines of his sparkling heavenly crown, but the form of it was there. There was a notification, this man is going to wear, this man is, has been crowned. Okay. Now, 
he went from having a thorny crown to having a glistening crown, a brightly shining crown, one that is beautiful. Of course, it says that he's the firstborn among brethren. Mm -hmm. That means that we get what he gets. We're joint heirs with him. If it applies to him, it applies to us. He was the God-man. He was, when he says son of man, he's saying the Ben-Adam, son of man. He identifies himself as human being. In Israel today, if you want to say he's a human being, you'd say he's a Ben-Adam, a son of Adam. He says, I'm a son of, Ad of Adam. I am a human being. So he's saying, he's saying, I am human being. When he says, I, I'm son of man, what he's saying in Hebrew is, I'm human being. He's a human being. What he gets, we get. All of it. And he says, listen, look at me. I'm the ticket. Watch what I do. I know the way. I know the way to get through all this. I'm the way. Look at how I'm doing it. It's the best way. It gives the best reward. Follow me. Well, we call ourselves followers of Messiah, but to follow is to do alike. It's to do what he does. It worked out for him. It didn't seem so, but look where he is now forevermore. Hmm? So he got himself a crown in this life made of thorns. And now it's taken place it's a spiritual crown. And we get what he gets. Oh, could that be a way of saying that in this life, we also are to wear a thorny crown? Hmm? And we are wearing a thorny crown. Now, sometimes the non-believers say, well, you're, yeah, he's a martyr. It's okay. It's okay to be a martyr for the Lord. All right? Because you're wearing your thorny crown. It's a sign, it's an invisible sign that you are wearing a thorny crown. It is, it is, it is an evidence that like he had a thorny crown, your thorny crown of the difficulty you're getting through this life will be reflected in a heavenly crown. Okay, so there's a, there's a connection between the, the physical material and the spiritual parallel. Let us take one more example, one more example uh, of this issue of reward with a crown. Yeshua says that in heaven there are many mansions, that he's building for us many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. So part of our future heavenly reward is a mansion. Uh-huh. Well, I was poor in this life, but I, I'm going to get a mansion? Yeah, well, that's what Yeshua said. He's not a liar. Was he a myth? No. I'd, I'd have to dismiss the rest of the Bible. I can't quite do that. So it must be true, or I, I, I can't believe any of the Bible. But if I do believe the Bible, it says that he is making for me and for you a mansion. I wonder, I wonder what is that parallel in this life? Remember, we're working with the the this life and the next life, the material and the spiritual. huh? So let's see how the parable works or how it could work. Could it be that there is an actual house in heaven, mansion, big time, and it doesn't make any difference whether you're rich or poor in this life, you're going to get a house depending upon what you did. Okay? Well, what's its, what's its parallel in this life? Could it be, could it be, that now remember what Yeshua said. He said that in three days I'm going I'm I'm to build this temple in three days. What did he mean by who can build a temple in three days? It took 54 years. How could you build? Well, by his deeds, by his deeds, he rebuilt a temple. He built a temple in three days by his deeds according to what he did, resulted in a temple in heavenly places. Could it be that according to what our doings are, that we are, without realizing it, we are building our mansion in heaven? 
according to Yeshua and by his doings and what he did with his life resulted in the rebuilding of a spiritual temple. He is firstborn among brethren. We are joint heirs. Same rules apply to him as apply to us. By our doings, we are, in effect, building our, temp our mansion. There we are. There we are. The potential exists, and is by we're believers. We took that we had the guts to, yeah, I, I, I don't understand. I'm going to invite them into my heart and life. I don't care what they say. I am desperate. I need it. I'm going to try it. I don't, under, I don't get it, but I'll wait. God, you've got to help me out with all this. And somehow we, we took a chance that all of society, I don't care what all of society, this is not working for me. I'm going to try this Yeshua. I don't care. I've got to try something. And we did. And then all kinds of understandings came to us. And life became new. We became new creatures. And now what happens? Now we begin to build. It takes more, it gets more grab in our life. And we begin to do things with, with, with our future in heaven in mind. We get to do things just to please our Messiah. That God would, that we, 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 we get to thank him. And, and, and we begin to do things. And in the doing of them, as Yeshua rebuilt a temple by his doings, so it would seem as though the parallel would be that we are building our own mansion. Our own mansion. Come on to my house, to my house, come on. That's us. So what kind of mansion am I going to have? I'm going to have a mansion. And you know what? It may be yours is bigger than mine. All right, so what? I got, I got more. I got a bigger mansion. I don't deserve a mansion at all. And I got one. I don't care if yours is bigger because I know if yours is bigger, you deserve it. You did something I failed to do. That's okay with me. I got my mansion. There I am. I'm in my house built by my deeds in this trial interim period. Oh, boy. I got, you mean I only got 70 years to rack up points? I only, got, I only got 70 years to rack up points to do something for myself in eternal places. Yeah, sorry to say you only get 70. Well, can I get some by extra strength? Yeah, we're going to get you 10 more years by extra strength. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we've got to look at your DNA here. But basically, it's going to be this short period of time. Well, I better get busy. I better get busy doing something with, to earn these points because I have a very limited opportunity. But I am going to take advantage of my opportunity. I am going to build me a mansion. And Yeshua, he is, he is, he is the, he's the developer. But it, it's invisible. You can't see it. It wasn't understood what he meant about rebuilding a temple in three days. It's not understood that we are building our own mansion. We are attaining our own crown. That's, that's our future. It isn't that we're just laying up there in a cloud of witnesses, watching the stars go by. No! We're going to have an exciting life. We're going to have authority in heaven. We're wearing a crown. We're in our mansion. Come on to my house. So my house to come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what this interim period is about. That's what it is. This is our, this is, this is where we get to play. This is where we get to be players. This is where we get to determine our future. Our future is determined now. Now. And that's why we're born into this life. And that's why we're given this interim period. And that's why we may do some suffering. Because in doing so, we are glistening up our crown. More jewels in our crown, more suffering, more crown. Wow. That's it. That's the reality. This is an illusion. This is a delusion, this short period where it all seems so important. You know what? It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. Right now, right this minute, while the Messiah is right here, while the Bible's right here, while all of this, it all seems so real, because it is the reality. I know. Give us, give us less than 24 hours, and we're going to forget this reality. But right now, it's a reality. Right now, it's real. Right now, we're willing to count on it and bet on it. Right now, we realize fully that this life is our opportunity. And right now, that's so real. Boy, if I could just, if I could just live in that, that, re that reality all the time, we can. We can live in, the God, in God's reality more. How do we do that? Well, 
you got to be praising the Lord. you got to be reading the Bible. you got to be attending services. And every time we start to do that, we have re-entered the kingdom of God. Profitable stuff. Profitable stuff. So, I know the people in this room, many. And I know, I know the hearts of so many people in this room. And the hearts of so many people who get up on a Saturday. This is an unusual day to get up. Huh? And then go to this place. You know, it doesn't even have a steeple. It they don't even have their own building. There are no wealthy people here. Huh? But they go out of their way. And, and, and they, are, they, they suffer reproach from family. You're going to where? I'm going to the Messianic congregation. To what? The Masonic Lodge? No, no, no. I don't get it. You know, first, first, first you're a Catholic, then you're, now you're a Protestant, now you're a Messianic. Do you know what you're doing altogether? It is... And, and you believe those myths? I mean, that's the world. That's the world. huh? So just by showing up, by showing up, amazing things can happen. Just by showing up. I'll tell you, we don't even realize, we don't even realize that our opportunity is here. And we kind of have made up our minds. You may never have said it to yourself in just these words. But I know the hearts of so many of you. And that is, the hearts of so many are to say, I'm giving it everything I got. I'm going all the way with this stuff. I'm throwing caution to the wind. I'm, uh, I'm going to leave it all on the field. When I leave, I want to be able to say, I did the best I could. I gave it my all. I may not have done important things in the eyes of the world, but I gave it all I had. I did the best job I could. I threw everything at it. I, I, did, I did whatever was served up for me. I went with it. That's, that'll be enough. Because on that day when we pass from this life, we too with the Apostle Paul will say, Therefore, there awaits for me a crown in heaven. And that's us. That's our future, and this little interim period, you know, it ain't such great stuff. Let's close in a word of prayer. Hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you can reveal to us the reality of the kingdom of God. We just thank you that we, too, can wear a crown that albeit in this life it may be a crown of thorns, but we do have a glistening crown awaiting us, and that we do have a mansion. And we do thank you that in this life we have opportunity, opportunity for our station to be established in heavenly places. We'll just thank you for this and for all that you give us in Yeshua's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. I'm going to call on Jerry Cohen. Close in a traditional melody of Ankeloheno. Let's all rise. All right, join me. Ankeloheno, Ankadoneno, Ankemalkenu, Ankemoshienu, Mikeloheno. Mi kadone nu, mi kemalke nu, mi kemoshi nu, no del elohe nu, no del adone nu, no del malke nu, no del emoshi nu. Hello, come on. Baruch elohe nu, Baruch adone nu. Baruch Malkeinu, Baruch Moshiinu, Atahu Eloheinu, Atahu Adoneinu, Atahu Malkeinu, Atahu Moshiinu. I can never remember that. There is none like our God. There is none like our Lord. There is none like our King. There is none like our Savior. Who is like our God? Who is like our Lord? Who is like our King? who is like our Savior. Let us thank our God. Let us thank our Lord. Let us thank our King. Let us thank our Savior. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.
Okay. 